it's always awesome when Rory's in town. He's been a friend for a long time, and um, and we miss him in Durban. So when we get him back here, we we, we, we love to take moments. We knew today would look different. If you've come to the business breakfast before, we, we often go upstairs and we dish up like bacon eggs and we sit down and we have a moment. And we just knew that today there may be a few extra people. Um, and so it looks a bit different. But thanks for being here. Thanks for taking time off business. I know in the North Coast, work starts at 5.30 in the morning and ends at 7 on Monday. And then that's it for the week. Um, but yeah, thanks for taking time off your day. I hope you'll be inspired today. I know you will be. I know Rory always carries something uh, big in his heart for business. He leads one, uh, is building a great one, and has always, always, always ignited business people, men and women. So husbands, if you're here alone, this is permission next time to bring your ladies. How many of you know they're the most important part of your business journey? Because whether they're building it with you in the office or praying for you at home, you need them. And so uh, it's always important to have our wives with us. Just a little encouragement and, uh, and do that next time. A little bit about Rory, and you know a lot about him, so I won't take a long time, but a friend or a guy recently, Bill Johnson, said something quite interesting. He said that the significance of your faith walk or influence is directly related to your willingness to surrender to the call of God in your life. You got to think about that for a bit. It's not going to sink in in a moment, but it, it, it stood out to me that the significance and influence of your life uh, might be parallel to your willingness to surrender to the way and will of God. And uh, I just thought that would be an apt way to say welcome because that's you. And the one thing I've loved about Raw from when I first met him, which was uh, probably 16 years ago now, 15 years ago, was I've, I've noticed this man in ever-increasing increments surrender more of his ways and his life and his story, whether it be finance or family or cars or whatever it is, I've just noticed him continually surrender more of what's in his life to the will and ways of God. And because of that, he's got a big, amazing life. A lot of people want the influence and generosity and all the things that Rory carries. But I just want to honor you for being the guy that surrenders when no one's watching, because that's what I've seen. And also we want to say well done on your son being selected for the under-18 South African rugby side. So come on, Rory, with that, come say hi to Link Church. Here we go, bud. Ah, oh, Dill, you're amazing. Maybe it's the Mutual Edification Club. Dylan saved me um, in many, many regards. I've been in the church a long time. My thinking had got stuck. And then I met Dylan and Tess. And... Um, I really, really love you both, very, very much indeed. You really have saved me in many regards, stopped me from becoming a grumpy old pastor. No, seriously, and uh, I love you very dearly. I'll be speaking on your Sunday service. I'll be preaching in Pretoria, but I'll be speaking online for some of the minutes, and um, <clears throat> really it will be to say thank you to the influence you've had in my life. It's amazing to be here, and um, I've watched you build this church. I've watched you guys grow up. I um, just really want to honor Rob Heenan and Rob Jobling and Nigel Slevin today. Three big pine trees that have fallen this year. Eh? And um, yeah, we, we stand on the shoulders of giants. We're never in the story alone. And um, yeah, I watched those men build the church and I watched them change as God's ways um, became open to them and the grace of God and the ways of the church and uh, don't get grumpy and old. Stay fresh, and you've got to hang around people that do that as well. It's good to be with you. Um, I had the privilege of um, God calling us to build a building in the middle of COVID. It cost 87 million rand. And um, six weeks after we started, we went into lockdown, which I thought was quite a lot of fun. I thought, how the heck are we going to build this? And God said, well, I never asked you to build it. I just, um, I'll, I'll provide. You just be obedient. So I thought, I didn't know how that was going to work. So, um, and then we had a business and I was reading in Isaiah 61. It says, I, the Lord, am fair and I pay salaries in full on time. I had 230 employees and God said, you must pay salaries in full on time. I said, but they're not working. And he said, but I'm fair. So I took a business through COVID. We paid full salaries, 230 people in full on time and we're still standing. And, um, and our church is built and paid for. So I have no testimony other than this, God is good. And I wanna to say to you business people, do not be afraid because we have an unfair advantage, we serve God. And so if you wanna turn with me in your Bibles, I'm not gonna speak for long, I'm just gonna show you a few pictures and a few stories. 
And I stand here very humbly. I honestly, I think most of you are probably better businessmen than me, better pastors, but I just have a story which I'd love to share with you about God. I was, I was reading the other day in Revelation and said, the Lord is faithful and true. And I'm a businessman, I'm a pastor, I'm a husband, I'm a friend, I'm a son. Um, um, and all of the, And I just took those two words, faithful and true, and I had a whole week. Every meeting I went into, every interaction I had, I said, God, you're faithful and true. And at the end of the week, I realized I had this unbelievable week on one name of God, faithful and true. I did business meetings, I did church meetings, I did sermon preparation on one name of God. Then I realized that there's 72 names of Jesus in the book of Revelation. I thought, flip, this is unbelievable. Imagine I learned all 72, I'm gonna become an awesome businessman, you know? Just, just a few names of God is enough for us to carry on. So this is what it says in James chapter four and verse 13. Now listen, say now listen. I think, I think stop talking. There's so many opinions, so many things going on. Just keep quiet and listen for a while. Just in your whole life. The newspapers are talking, the government are talking, the riots are talking, everybody's shouting, the oil price is talking. Just, just listen. Now listen. You who say today or tomorrow, we'll go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make some money. You think we can just operate? Why? You don't know, even know what to, will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, say the Lord's will. If it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or do that. As it is, you boast and brag, all such boasting is evil. I cannot stand up here and say anything other than the best of my ability, I followed the Lord's will through COVID with a church and with a business and I stand here by the grace of God. God called us to build a church. Don't do this. Please don't do this unless God speaks to you. When, when, when we took up our first offering, I thought Pretoria East will get 15 million rand in and we'll put the deposit down and away we go. We took up our first offering, it was 50,000 rand. 50 grand. I thought you flipping stingy a Dutchman. <laughs> and, and I went home, I thought, flip, I want to go back to Durban and build church with English oaks. <laughs> and, and I felt God say, give everything away. And I said, like what? He said, like everything. So I gave my car away. I stopped my salary for 22 months and I walked. And I walked and I cried and I shouted with God. And slowly but surely... <laughs> He started to teach me his will. I got lifts. I had to borrow cars. I had to catch a bus to my business. And all of that time, he got to the bottom of my heart. There's too much of our opinions in our lives, guys. We've got to get to the place where we start to listen to God. The day before lockdown, God works with me at number plates. I know some of you have seen this story, but I want to show it to you. God works with number plates with me. When I said, don't you do it because you'll do something stupid. One of our elders, when I gave my car away, he said, I'm also going to give my car away. I said, my mate, you give your car away, you'll walk for the rest of your life. God told me to give my car away. Only do what God tells you to do. Don't do anything else. But I want to tell you this, friends. Do not allow the economy or the effects of humankind dictate what you do with your money. Let the Bible do that. If I did it all again, I've served God for 35 years. The first thing I'm going to do is tithe. That was the first thing. People say, how do you stand here? I said, because I tithe. I've tithed for 35 years. I've never missed a month. It is the greatest lesson I've learned in Christianity. Because if, if God has access to your finances, you'll have access to every part of your life. Amen? So the day before lockdown, the, I, I was in a car park and I saw this car. There were eight in a row. One, I haven't got all eight. Next picture. Two, next picture. Three, next picture, and, and stop it there, keep it there. There were eight in a row. I was with a guy called Steve Johnson. 46, 46, 46. Now, we're in an 87 million rand building project, and uh, we're about to go into lockdown, and we're not going to meet for six months, and God says, you have to raise the money, and I think, I don't know how to, and it's just 46, 46. He's going to read Psalm 46. So I'm going to read it, and Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God. That's the Lord's will. So every time I panicked, I felt God say, why are you panicking? 
you can't raise the money. You're not clever enough. You're not a good marketer. You don't know how to get money out of people. So just be still because you're too doff to do it anyway. You see, friends, when we build businesses or start churches, we kind of start it and say, God, would you come? That's not what the Bible says. That's not the Lord's will. God planted 3CR Church and he said to me from Durban, would you come and join me at 3CR? God started a business and he said, will you come and join me? Your business wasn't your idea. Your business was God's idea. You have to join God on his mission, not ask God to join you on your mission. There's a big difference. It's God's church. I have to preach on Sunday. I don't have to say, oh God, come God, come God, give me a word. I just have to go and join him. Say, Father, what do you want to say to your people today? It takes a lot of pressure off us. And so every time I panicked, and then the money started coming in. And, and I lived by faith. I didn't get a salary first month, didn't get a salary second month. And, the, and then the Afrikaners started dropping off lamb. I wake up and it'd be like a whole sheep at my door. So freak, you Afrikaners are good oaks, eh? I mean, the Natal guys bring sugar cane. You know, we, we had a sheep, like a whole sheep. You know what I'm saying? And then we ran out of money completely. And I was in, I, I panicked. I thought, God, what are we going to do? And I drove to Johannesburg and this car came in front of me. And God said, now will you be still and know that I am God? I want to say to you, businessmen, do not be afraid. And businesswomen, do not be afraid. We are not linked to the oil price or the fuel price or the food or the world economy. We are linked to God. Do not be afraid. We are linked to the will of God. Stop panicking. Do not be scared. And I want to cry over some of you and your businesses because some of you are literally a week or two away from bankruptcy. Do not be afraid. After I saw this, 600,000 rand came in. I thought, phew, but we had like big bills to pay. 600,000 rand came in. I thought, what are we going to do with this? We prayed. One of our elders said, we, we can't do anything with the 600 grand. We're going to have to give it away. I was like, what? We got like millions to pay. He said, let's give it away. So we prayed. There's only one other church dumb enough to build a building during lockdown. They called, um, I can't even remember their name. We didn't even know them. We phoned them. We gave them the 600,000 rand and we had zero. And I went on holiday and I hired a golf cart. And Peter Matkovich will tell you, Samola, you hire the golf cart at the top and it comes on the bottom and it drives down. And Thomas said, hey, dad, it's 46. And God said, now listen, I'll build the church. You go and relax. Zero in our bank account. Zero. I thought, God, how? He said, just be still and know. I told you to build the church. It's not your idea. Three days later, I invited a friend of mine to come and play golf with me. This is how he arrived from Mossel Bay. <laughs> when we got to the halfway house, this is the picture that our building guy sent to me. Next picture, please. No, no, gold. Halfway house, Samola, December. That's the picture that got sent us. A woman drives in in a polo golf with a mask on and she says, don't ask my name. Don't ask my telephone number. Don't try and follow me up. In 1975, say 1975. I don't know if you're a mathematician. 2021 minus 1975 is... 46 exactly. In 1975, God told my dad to buy gold for a church that pleases him. And this morning I woke up and our family says, your church pleases God. So she dropped off 6 million rand. She got in her polo golf and she drove away. I just want to say this to you. Do not be afraid. You know, I walk into our building, eh? And people say, how did you do it? And I said, I didn't do it. I said, how did you raise the money? I said, I didn't. I literally just obeyed God. I just did what God told us to do. 
day by day, week by week, month by month. And when I look back, it was paid off, and I don't know how, but I do know this, that God was with us. That God is with us. If, if, if I have a testimony of Ling Church, it is that Jesus has walked amongst you. He's walked through your aisles. I sat there at Rob Heenan's memorial service. He's walked through your aisles. He's walked through your people. He's had interactions with you. This is a testimony in the midst of the greatest crisis in the world. God could build his church for cash. This is on the way to selling the gold. The next picture, please. I'm Rory Dyer, hey? Be still and know that I am God, Rory Dyer. This is the guy who bought the gold. His name is Frederick Kruger. The next picture, please. He bought the gold. Our building contractors are called Funder Linda Fenter, VV. They wanted their money. I was driving along one of the roads in Durban. Our accountant phoned me and said, Funder Linda Fenter want their money. This car was in front of me when he phoned. Be still and know that I am God, Rory Dyer. Be still and know that I am God, Funder Linda Fenter. Be still and know that I am God, Link Church. Be still and know that I am God, Visitors to Link Church. Be still and know that I am God, Building Contractor. Be still and know that I am God, whatever business you do. I showed this to our elders. I said, Rory, maybe you're imagining. So I said, okay, Lord, if I'm imagining, then just confirm it for me. And I went to pick my boys up from golf. And those two cars were next to each other. And then I've got a son at Hilton. How do you know you've got a son at Hilton? You get told you've got a son at Hilton. <laughs> exactly. Like somebody said, hey, I went to Gray. I know you went to Gray because you'll tell me you went to Gray. So I went to pick up my sons and these two things. And I, I've got a little boy. And two days later, I took him to St. Albans because I don't want to travel on the highway anymore to, to Hilton. I want to send him to St. Albans. And I walk into the headmaster's house office at St. Albans, and this is what's on his wall. Next photo, please. That's the, that's, the, that's the painting in the office of the headmaster of St. Albans. That's where my son's at school now because of one scripture. What has God said to you? What has he said to you about your business? What has he said to you about your marriage? What has he said to you about your friendship? What has he said to you about your ex-wife? Because you can stop the nonsense in your family today by changing your attitude towards your ex-wife on a building project. Just listen. One scripture. The Lord's will. The Lord's will. You know the story, some of you. But my dad was an amazing man. He wasn't saved until right at the end of his life. But he was a very amazing man. He got very sick. And um, I went into his hospital room one day. I've told the story before, but I'm going to show you something I've never shown anybody except my church last week. But I went into his hospital one day. I said, hey, dad, how are you doing? He said, I'm well, boy. He said, he said how's Thomas? But he was complete. He was hallucinating and he, was, he had lost it. He said, how's Thomas? I said, Thomas is good, dad. He said, boy, what's Thomas's rugby like? And I said, Dad, Thomas's rugby is excellent. I think he's going to play for the Blue Bulls this year, Craven Week. He said, China, we've got to get him to Hilton. And I said, Dad, I can't afford to send him to Hilton. He said, okay, but, but, but we've got to make a plan. I said, okay, Dad. I went back that night. My dad was mad. He had lost it. He was seeing things. And then he died. When he died, this was the front page of his will. In the 20 minutes that I left hospital, he wrote a letter. This is a sick father, hey? It is my Ian William Mitchell Dyer's wish that money be made available for my grandson. Spelt wrong. Thomas J. Dyer, that's not his name. He doesn't have a second name. To attend Hilton College for his shul, Attending is a sick father, hey? They're a very sick man. And look at the bottom. Not witness, winters. The sick dad. 
A sick dad wrote that letter. <laughs> Let me show you. That is a will. Let me show you what an heir looks like. The next picture, please. That's an heir. There's a will and there's an heir. This is the will. You've got to walk in it. You become an heir. The first one is the will of a sick father. This is the will of a healthy father. If a sick father who doesn't know how to spell can write a will for his grandson who seven years later walks into an inheritance, how much more? Say how much more? I don't know if you're a bricklayer or a golf course builder or in the NGO space. Well, I met a, a, a two doctors. One of them is running Addington. I don't know what space you're in. But I want to tell you, inside of here is the Lord's will. And that Lord can build a church in the middle of lockdown. And that Lord can educate children in schools that I can't afford. And that Lord can look after your business in the midst of absolute crisis. And I stand here, I can't boast. I can't brag. I can only tell you this, that God is faithful and God is true. And God is kind and God is generous, and God is honest to his word, and he's, 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 he's authoritative, he's merciful, he's compassionate, and he will never let you down. Can I show you the next photograph? That's when you go beyond the will, and you become the captain of the sharks, and you go to Craven Week, and you win man of the match with a white hat because you've taken the will of a father and you've started to believe everything he said about you. And let me show you the next picture. I'm not boasting about my son. I'm telling you that there is a will that every one of us can walk into. And last Sunday, last Sunday night, as my son got capped for SA Schools Rugby, I took my dad's will and I just stood and I thought, God, if I could teach this to every single person in the church, imagine if we all started living in the fullness of what God had for us. It was my birthday last Wednesday. I flew down to Cape Town. And I saw my son in his South African school's tracksuit. And um, I'm on a business group. And uh, one of them is a Springbok rugby player, Warren Brosnian. And we were meeting last Wednesday and the guy SMS, he said, 99.9% .9 of fathers in South Africa would love to, their sons to play SA schools rugby. And I SMSed, I disappointed my dad. And the next guy said, I also disappointed mine and I disappointed mine and I disappointed mine. And, and then I walked towards my son playing SA schools rugby. And he said, hey, dad, can we just go around the corner, please? I said, yeah, sure, boy. I said, what's wrong? He said, I want to give you a birthday present. And he took out his springback tie. And he gave it to me. He said, dad, you've been a springback father. The tears didn't come down this way. They just, they just went that way. And you know, friends, I can remember, I can remember leaving Pretoria at half past three one day on a Saturday, driving to DHS, 700 kilometers, watching my son play an hour and 15 minutes of rugby, getting in my car and driving 700 kilometers back and standing up and preaching on Sunday because that is the will of God. And sometimes we just do the will and we do the will and we do the will and we do the will and nobody sees and nobody knows and the road is long and the road is lonely and the road is hard. And there are many days, this, this, I started in Cape Town, I was speaking at a 
a conference in Cape Town. I got up at half past four in the morning at Stellenbosch. I drove to the airport. I flew to Durban. I had a meeting in Durban. My car was here. I went to Hilton. I watched the rugby. I drove back to Pretoria. I started half past four in the morning in Stellenbosch. I landed up in Durban, half past, uh, Pretoria, half past nine at night. I got up and I preached because that's the will of God. It's not easy. And then every now and again, you just get this moment. And I went, I went home to my hotel in Cape Town, looked at it, and I thought, I wonder if I'm a springbok husband or just a springbok dad. And I felt God say, you've actually become really ratty with your wife. And she came back the other day and I sat there down and I said, you know, sweetie, my life has got so busy and, and with the business and the church and Thomas and the rugby and our other kids, I feel like I've gone backwards in my husbanding. I commit to 30 years of kindness. I'm going to be kind to you for 30 years because that's what the will is. And I want to live in the inheritance as a springbok husband and father, and friend, and church member, and all sorts of things. He's good, and he's kind, and if you find yourself on the floor of your bathroom crying out to God, he might use a vodka bottle, or he might use Krugerrands, but he'll use something. Don't panic. Do not be afraid. God is with us. If he can use a sick father to send my son to the most expensive school in this country. And can you imagine what he can do with the resources he's got in the word? He can do whatever he likes. He can do whatever he likes. Can I pray for you, please? I just want to pray a simple prayer. God bless you. 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 I am the recipient of God's unbelievable grace. God bless you. 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 I paid 230 salaries for four months in a business that never traded. Not one single person said thank you. Not one single person said thank you. But God spoke to me. He said, I, the Lord, am fair. I pay salaries in full on time. Don't worry about what people say to you. Don't worry about whether they're grateful or ungrateful. Just do what God calls you to do. God bless you. God bless you. His ways are above our ways. He has resources you know not of. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. now can't move me me too um the pursuit of a father is a very special thing um heavenly father maybe you're new to church maybe you came with a friend today and you're not sure what's going on but your heart is pounding it's because the pursuit of your heavenly father is a very real thing and uh, I, I get tender whenever Rory's in town because he brings me closer to my heavenly father and it's like quite a special place you know for sons and daughters I like that because it's like fair playing ground when you're with your Heavenly Father. We're just sons and daughters. No one's special. Kind of feels like Rory is, I'll be honest, but, um, but it's really true for all of us. So I hope you were ministered to today. I hope, uh, I hope your heart feels fuller. I hope you come back. I hope you bring everybody next time. 
Because I don't know if you know this, but God is awakening us to what's already there. Do you realize that? Like even sitting here today as Rory's speaking, I'm like, he's just reminding me and awakening me to what's already there. The, peace, the pursuit of a father is a very real thing. I want to say thank you to other church guys. I saw a couple of friends from other churches pulled in here today. You guys are legends. And uh, really stoked to have you here and your people coming with you. And uh, I know it's not your people, but you know what I mean. Um, it's just awesome to see your faces. Guys, it is eight o'clock. And I, I'm not going to rush you out of here. I feel like we could sit here for another three hours. Um, stick around if you want. Catch up with a friend. I reckon there's going to be some ministry moments. I feel like there's some guys who, as you're sitting in the room, God's put someone in your heart and uh, someone that needs to hear a word of encouragement or a thought or a prayer or a reminder of God bless you. Three simple words. Uh, just so beautiful. But Raw, thank you, bud. Thank you. I look forward. Yes, of course. I was hoping he would do this. One more thing. Anyone good? So because we paid these salaries, we had to go into overdraft. Our business hasn't been in overdraft for 25 years. And my dad's accountant said to me, your dad would not be happy uh, with you taking your business into overdraft. He said he, he, would, he would call you unwise. And so we had to sign the overdraft papers and they said you have to sign surety, Standard Bank. And my dad got two gold pens from Standard Bank for 30 years of good service. And I said, the Bible says I can't sign charity. And the guy said, you have to sign charity. So I put the two gold pens down. I said, how many of your customers have got these gold pens? He said, I've never seen these before. What are they? I said, these are pens for good service. My dad's word was good. My word is good. And the God that I serve's word is good. And the guy said, Mr. Dyer, we'll never, ever be able to get. 24 hours later, I got a message from the head office in Standard Bank saying, you don't have to sign charity. You see, friends, we don't operate with the ways of the world. We operate, operate differently. And when I signed the surety, I put the date wrong. So, so the guy came back and said, your, your, your um, overdraft has been approved, but your date is wrong. You have to change it. By the time we changed the date, we had traded ourselves out of trouble. Just give God a chance. Just give God a chance. We don't work with the ways of the world. A golden pen of an earthly dad bypass the processes of Standard Bank. What about the written word of the Heavenly Father? How much more can he bypass the processes of an economic crash? Or chaos in the tell? Or violence and crime? God can bypass it. I'm telling you. Stay right here. Can you all stand? We're going to do this. I feel like um, we've always said so many times things in faith are caught, not taught. And uh, we're going to catch something now. And I'm going to ask Raw to pray specifically for businesses. He's going to go wherever God leads him. But I feel like there's business in the room now that is going to make a decision to actually just put it before God. Like not just in word, but God's going to speak now and he's going to tell you what to do next. Then you're going to trust him with it. So if you're feeling comfortable wherever you are, just, just get yourself comfortable to receive from God. But Rolf, you could just press into businesses, but I think. Okay.